I was, you know, licking our wounds because we'd just been informed that we would have to shut down the theaters, Korean theater, and we have to focus on our online offerings only. So this year we're very excited because we're returning Korean theater. In theater will be December 1st to December 5th, and I'm proud to announce that we'll be opening with the Canadian premiere of Maggie Gyllenhaal's The Lost Daughter. Um, we'll be closing on December 5th with the North American premiere of an Austrian film called Changing the Line, directed by Andrea Schmidt. It's the story of the 1976 uh, gold medal winner, uh, Franz Klammer. It's not a documentary. It's actually an exciting uh, theatrical movie that integrates acting, very cool 1970s music and actual footage uh, uh, from the um, Olympics. Our online selections will start on December 1st and run right through till December 31st. We'll be opening on December 1st with Savvy by Robin Hauser. That's a Canadian premiere of a documentary that focuses on women's financial issues and encourages women to be less dependent on their partners for their uh, lot in life. And it'll be our uh, final premiere will be on December 25th, Peace by Chocolate, which is a wonderful movie set in Maritimes, a true story about a family of Syrian refugees who were uh, welcomed into the local community and helped to establish a very successful um, chocolate manufacturing company that is now known around the world. We'll be premiering one or two movies a day from December 1st to December 25th, and all films will be available for streaming until midnight on December 31st. So that's the hybrid snapshot. Um, going back to our in theater, um, very excited about The Lost Daughter. It's a film that uh, won a Best Screenplay Award at uh, the Venice Film Festival. It stars Olivia Coleman, uh, Dakota Johnson, and Ed Harris. And uh, the reason I'm excited about it is because it kind of sets the tone, I think, for our, our whole film festival. It's kind of a very innovative, chance-taking, indie-spirited movie directed by a first-time filmmaker, Maggie Gyllenhaal. It's her first film uh, directed by a woman. And this kind of sets into some of the um, key statistics that are coming out of this year's programming. I'm pleased, uh, indeed proud to announce that for the first time ever, we've hit a 50% threshold for our feature films in terms of female directed movies. This is something we've been talking about at Whistler oh, going back six, seven years. And every year people would ask me, well, do you have a quota? Why don't you make 50%? And I kept saying, no, it's totally based on quality. And it was a little frustrating because you could see the percentages creep up 42, 43, 45, 47, but we could never attain equity. And this year, um, without stretching it, we easily attained equity. And I'm kind of celebrating that as a, uh, uh, you know, major threshold. 61% of our shorts are directed by Canadians as well, uh, or women as well, so that the overall percentage is 56%. But the 50% of the features, I think, is quite a threshold to attain. I'm not sure any other general international film festival in Canada has been able to say that. It's only by combining your shorts that you attain those numbers. So fully half of our features are directed by women. The other extraordinary um, statistic, as far as I'm concerned, and one that Whistler is very proud of, and again, Maggie Gyllenhaal is a first-time filmmaker, exemplifies this, is the fact that 41% of our features are far from first time filmmakers. And that's a very particular niche that I think Whistler has developed that we don't just chase the already established people. Connects very well with our content summit and the development programs that we have. We are very much about priming the pump for talent in Canada. Um, by the way, 61% of our overall uh, programming is Canadian content as always. And that's the most Canadian of all Canadian film festivals, I believe. Um, above and beyond The Lost Daughter, which we're very proud to open with, um, and we think we'll be up for um, some Academy Award considerations, especially in the screenplay and best acting categories. Um, we have another group of award contenders. We have the English Canadian premiere of Paolo Sarantino's The Hand of God which is a sort of coming of age movie that will recall Amarcord or Cinema Paradiso. 
Uh, it won uh, a silver lion. Uh, basically, it was uh, um, the second award winner at Venice this year. We have uh, Paul Schrader's The Card Counter, which actually has had a theatrical release in many parts of Canada, but has never played Whistler, and I don't believe has played any other Canadian film festival. Um, and so uh, we thought that was an important film. We think it has a good chance for a screenplay award as well, and Oscar Isaac for the best actor. We have, of course, Jane Campion's The Power of the Dog, which has been one of the hottest buzz movies of the year. Um, it uh, will have just started on uh, Netflix uh, just before we get to run it. But we have followed down this path before. Two years ago, we ran Martin Scorsese's The Irishman a week after Netflix started. And we sold out one of our screenings and had a huge capacity for the second. So I think there's a, a market, especially in Whistler, where these films don't play locally to see these films on the big screen. Finally, we're excited about a film called Jockey by Clint Bentley, which uh, might recall um, uh, Chloe Zhao's The Rider in terms of style. It's got a lot of documentary uh, elements with uh, fictional um, characters mixing with real life jockeys. Uh, Clifton Collins Jr. gives an extraordinary performance. Um, we uh, believe that the film uh, will do very well on the independent circuit and has an outside chance for some Oscars. So those are our five uh, Oscar contenders, if you will. Um, we're very proud of the fact that about 15% of our programming represents uh, world premieres and about two thirds of our programming represents films that have not played other Canadian film festivals. Um, quickly going down our world premiere list, um, we're particularly excited about having the world premiere of Confessions of a Hitman. Uh, this is directed by uh, Luc Picard and starring Luc Picard um, and David LaHaye. It's a remarkable true story about um, a guy who killed, assassinated 28 people on behalf of Quebec biker gangs over 25 years and never got caught. And the fact that he was, um, doesn't come across as terribly bright, seems socially maladies, he stutters. Um, it's just a remarkable story and it's kind of Canada's Irishman. And I think in terms of impact and um, acting, um, this is a major film that we're proud to world premiere, a major Canadian film. And um, last we heard, Luc Picard and David LaHaye will be in Whistler for the premiere. Uh, we're also premiering another, uh, world premiering another Quebec movie called Inez by Rene Beaulieu, uh, who shocked some of the people at Whistler a few years ago with her film Les Salop, which was about a woman with um, um, fairly aggressive uh, uh, sexual behaviors. This one is even more shocking because it stars Roy Dupuis. Uh, Roy Dupuis is well known in English Canada for playing Maurice Richard in The Rocket. Uh, and uh, Romeo Dallaire and shake hands with the devil. But in this one, he really does not play a hero. He plays a father who's been abusing his daughter who's now turned 20 and is trying to come of age and break away from his influence. Uh, that one's gonna be controversial and getting a lot of chit chat. Um, we have Carmen, uh, world premiere of a film by Valerie Buhagiar, who's well-known, well-established. This is a beautiful film shot in Malta uh, starring Natasha McElhone in what I think is one of her best performances. Uh, it wouldn't be a Whistler Film Festival without BC-based filmmaker Carl Besai giving us a world premiere. And this, this year, it's a wonderful little uh, character study called Evelyn um, about a woman from Africa who's trying to make it in uh, Vancouver and the uh, sweet-natured um, um, apartment caretaker who takes her in and gives her a helping hand, played by Carl Besai himself. You can tell this was shot under COVID. Um, we've got um, the first, I think, major Filipino-Canadian film uh, called Alter Boy, a coming of age story directed by Servil Poblet. We have a documentary that I think will get a lot of attention. It's made by a group of filmmakers out of Vancouver, but it's called Pat Rock O'Dared. And it's the story of a pioneering gay um, 
documentary filmmaker who established a distribution model that I think was the first time members of the general public could ever buy tickets to go see gay films in the 60s. He's also responsible for establishing, um, for showing, I think, the first on-screen kiss between two men back in um, the, the mid-60s. And there's some incredible footage in this film. They managed to interview Mr. Rocco just before he died and got access to uh, all of his films. There's a scene at one point in the movie where uh, they shut down the uh, Hollywood freeway and this happy gay man goes running up the uh, lanes on this major you know, eight lane highway. Uh, and they shot it from the overhead pass. It was like the opening scene from La La Land years before anybody could have conceived of such a thing. Anyway, those are our world premieres. Um, they're all exciting, as you can see, I could go on for hours talking about them. Um, I think it's very important, however, to remember that we're really about the Borsos competition, uh, which has, um, you know, $15,000 cash, um, additional money for uh, completion. Uh, I think it's the second most generous um, um, cash award in Canada. And to set it up, I believe we have a little clip. We do have a kit, clip with a little bit more setup. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I should have given you a countdown. <laughs> yeah, one moment, please. The uh, 15 uh, Borsos films in competition this year. Uh, by the way, our jury uh, will be made up of uh, Tanya Lapointe, who uh, won the Audience Award last year for her documentary, The Paper Man, and um, is one of the producers of uh, Denis Villeneuve's Dune. Uh, Sergio Navarretto, who uh, produced The Cuban for us and um, well known in Canadian film circles. Sterla Gunnarsson, um, who's done features, documentaries, Monsoon, still one of my favorite documentaries, and Damon de Oliveria, who um, is most associated with the films of Clement Virgo, but has produced a number of outstanding Canadian films on his own. So we've got a great Borsos jury. And the Borsos films this year are Alter Boy, the Filipino-Canadian film that I already referenced, uh, Carmen, the Valerie Buhagiar film um, produced uh, in Malta, which I mentioned, um, Cinema of Sleep from uh, Jeffrey St. Jules, who uh, was at our festival a couple of years ago with Bang Bang Baby. Uh, Confessions of a Hitman, the Luc Picard film. Dawn, Her Dad in the Tractor by Shelley Thompson, her first film. Um, this is a story about uh, someone who returns to uh, their hometown in the Maritimes for a funeral, the mother's funeral, and shows up looking very much like mother. When he left town, he was Don, D-O-N. When he returns to town, he's Don, D-A-W-N. Um, it stars um, uh, our, an actor who is um, uh, transitioning in real life and has over 200,000 people uh, following her on YouTube. So uh, that's going to be a very interesting film. We're uh, showing Drink Water, directed by Stephen Campanelli, uh, which stars Eric McCormack. That's a DC-based film and one that's going to introduce uh, a bit of comedy and fun um, because it's really a coming age story about a guy whose dad is a bit of a scam artist. It's played by Eric McCormack with a lot of relish. We've mentioned Ele Evelyn by Carl Basai and Inez. We're showing a film called L'Inhumé, the Unhuman by Joseph uh, Brennan. This is the first French language genre film. Um, there have been uh, uh, set in the indigenous community. There have been um, a number of indigenous genre films. 
uh, but this is the first one that's entirely in the French language. Last year, we showed a bilingual one. This is the first entirely French language um, uh, genre film. We're showing a film called Loon, uh, co-directed by Aviva Amour Ostroff and Arturo Perez Torres. And Aviva Amour Ostroff, who has a background in theater, plays the lead character, who is a woman from South Africa um, who suffers from bipolar disorder. And it's about her uh, relationship with her daughter and her uh, connection to the anti-apartheid movement in South Africa. Really a fascinating uh, movie. We're showing a film called Nouveau Quebec, a first film by Sarah Fortin about a couple that's called up to the um, dying mining town of Shefferville in Northern Quebec. Uh, Shefferville was a, a big thing in the 1930s and 40s in Quebec because it had an active mine, but when the mine closed down, um, the number of people living there is down to 300. And they're completely surrounded by indigenous communities who never took well to the strip mining of their uh, natural resources. So it's a very fascinating film. We mentioned Peace by Chocolate um, as our closing night online. We have a film called Run, Woman, Run by Zoe Leigh Hopkins, which is actually very funny. It's about this indigenous woman who's diagnosed as being diabetic. And uh, the first part of the movie, it's literally um, how she completely rejects any attempt to get her to become physically active. She literally hops in the car to drive to the mailbox uh, by the side of the road and back every day and everybody is bugging her. But uh, uh, an elder, um, a person from the past appears in her dreams and basically gives her a boot in the ass to start running. And it's really how uh, she finds herself by becoming physically active and addressing her um, medical problems. And finally, um, we have the Canadian premiere of Katie Boland's We're All In This Together. Um, Katie Bolin is well known to most of you. She's a, a very prolific actress in Canada, but this is her first attempt at writing and directing a feature film. It's based on a novel. Uh, and just in case that wasn't challenging enough, uh, she plays two leads, twin sisters. And so I think it's an unbelievably ambitious uh, first film where you write, direct, and act uh, yourself as, as two people. Anyway, there are many, many other movies. We have uh, 40 in all. Uh, nine will be exclusive to in theater. 31 will run online. And I could go on at length about every one of them, but I really want to give uh, Lisa a chance to talk about our wonderful lineup of shorts this year. And we can come back if there's any questions afterwards. Thanks. Thanks so much, Paul. Hi, everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, I am pleased to be joining the Whistler team. Um, thank you so much for having me. It's a thrill to be part of this team so far. And I'm very excited about this festival in December. Um, we will have 41 short films uh, premiering within six programs, all of which will be available to Whistler audiences in cinema from December 2nd to 5th. And virtual audiences can enjoy 34 films from five programs throughout the entire month of December. Um, there are four strands similar to previous years. We have our standard short work strand, the mountain culture shorts, and one um, BC student short program. Um, and we are very thrilled to welcome our jurors this year who are filmmaker and activist Kelly Fife Marshall, producer Coral Aiken, and festival curator and strategy consultant, um, Christine Estominos. So this year, um, the goal was really to expand the international offerings while also still focusing on some BC talent. So there are 13 countries, 32% of the program are represented um, and include award-winning films that have already played at some prestigious festivals such as Cannes, Telluride, Annecy, Aspen, Palm Springs and South by Southwest. So thrilled to share those with our audiences, many of which have at least Canadian premieres. Um, 28 of the shorts are Canadian, 19 of which are from BC. So we're thrilled to welcome our local talent and it includes uh, Whistler student alumni that we've shown in the past, first time filmmakers, um, rising directorial talents who are making lots of great waves 
um, in Canada and abroad and established recognizable names as well. So a little bit of everything and similar to previous years, um, we're very pleased to highlight, um, as Paul mentioned, the female directors. So they make up a majority of our short works program with 25 um, out of the 41 films. So that is wonderful. Um, the shorts program will feature a wide range of styles from animation to sci-fi to COVID inspired comedies to environmental documentaries. And the filmmaking is very bold, very innovative and the perspectives are diverse and very wide ranging. So it's a very exciting lineup and that is for many reasons and we're thrilled to share it with our Whistler audiences. I'm happy to speak to any film um, in more detail, but that kind of gives you an overview of the program um, on a whole. I love them all. So um, I hope that our audiences feel the same way. Thank you so much, Lisa. And uh, to Paul, uh, first of all, for your amazing programming and also for uh, telling our, our media friends here today what we're up to. So what you can see is that uh, we've really ex expanded our horizons by providing the hybrid formula here for in-person and online programming. And uh, we're looking at being as welcoming as possible to our audiences and our filmmakers in both spaces. Uh, I'm sure for those of us uh, attending in Whistler, the industry lounge will be a very happening place. And uh, there's also so many other spaces to reconnect online as well. Uh, I'm really excited about the, the depth and breadth of the programming and the stories that will grace the festival this year. Uh, but honestly, mostly very excited by, by the energy, um, the, the truth, the authenticity that we're really seeing coming out of this exciting time. A lot of it seems very realistic and yet also very hopeful. So driven by our love of cinema and our commitment to nurturing talent, uh, we are curating this festival with the same kind of energy and passion that we've always brought to the task. And uh, we'll bring the best of the Whistler Film Festival to our audiences really wherever they are. So thanks again to Paul Graton and to Lisa and your programming team, uh, to our staff, our board of directors, our volunteers, fundraisers, supporters, and of course the film community and our media friends here today. So thank you uh, for joining us and we look forward to seeing you in Whistler and online starting December 1st.